For more videos on people's struggles, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Multiple charges against three activists from Denver, Colorado and the United States who were arrested for organizing protests seeking justice for Elijah McLean have been withdrawn by the district attorney. The decision to dismiss six counts of felony in Arapaho County against Terrence Roberts, Joel Northam and Lillian House was taken by the office of the 18th Judicial District Attorney on Sunday, April 4th. District Attorney John Keller's office confirmed in a statement released on Monday that the charges were dismissed after the prosecution moved to dismiss all major felony charges along, along with major misdemeanor charges. The move comes after the recent withdrawal of kidnapping charges against the three by a local judge some weeks ago. The three activists are members of the local chapter of the Party for Socialism and Liberation, PSL. They were among the six arrested and charged last year for organizing a protest at the Aurora police station near Denver in June and July 2020. They were demanding justice for the 2019 custodial death of Elijah McLean and other victims of police violence. The protests were part of a countrywide movement against racism and police violence sparked by the killing of George Floyd in May 2020. The police alleged that the protesters barricaded the precinct office, supposedly trapping several officers inside the building for several hours. The three activists and their defence attorney, Joshua Landy, have consistently asserted that the investigation was biased against the protesters and called it selective prosecution and a complete violation of free speech, an overstep of government power and the use of police authority to shut down legitimate speech. Earlier charges which came from both Arapaho County and Adams County included theft and attempted kidnapping. They were also arrested for over a week in September 2020 and subsequently released on bail. The revised charges now include misdemeanor, four counts against Lillian House, six counts against Joel Northam and one against Terence Roberts. These and other existing felony cases against the three in Adams County could still carry a maximum prison sentence of 13.5 years between them. The National Committee for Justice in Denver continues to reiterate their stand that all charges be dropped against them. They said, We continue to call on both prosecuting district attorneys John Kellner and Brian Mason of Adams County to drop all charges against the leaders of the peaceful protests for justice for Elijah McLean. Any continuation of the criminal prosecution perpetuates the miscarriage of justice. 23-year-old Elijah McLean was killed on August 30, 2019 while he was being arrested based on a phone call which accused him of looking sketchy. McLean was reportedly pinned down by the officers with one putting him in a chokehold for nearly 15 minutes. He was administered a sedative by paramedics, both of which caused his death. The body cameras of the officers were not working at the time of the arrest while a police department report alleged, that the, alleged without basis that McLean tried to reach for one of their guns. But the cameras did audio record the incident with McLean repeatedly heard saying, I can't breathe and vomiting several times while being put in a chokehold. McLean's family and community members have been struggling ever since to secure justice, but local authorities have refused to charge the three police officers or the paramedic who administered the sedative. Demonstrations were held since at least November 2019, with the movement receiving countrywide attention after the George Floyd protests spread across the country. The three activists have reiterated their commitment to secure justice for McLean and continue their struggle for racial justice, even as they continue to face prosecution and attend court hearings. In September, following the legal action against them, Eugene Pourier of Breakthrough News spoke to us about the background to the case. Here is what he had to say then. Late the night before and yesterday morning, there was a, uh, a concerted effort by police in the area of Denver, Colorado, to single out uh, a number of activists, four members of the PSL, leading members of the PSL. Uh, and it appears that perhaps some of our allies as well were also targeted. And we're still trying to get the full force of who may have been caught in this dragnet. But they were uh, stopping people at work. Uh, one of the individuals, Joel Northam, was, actually had a SWAT team with an armored vehicle show up to his house to arrest him. Lillian House, another one of the activists who was arrested, was surrounded on the road by five police cars and taken in. So they were taken in in, in a manner that made it seem like they were, you know, multi-state criminals or something that had committed a string of armed robberies or whatever it may be, despite the fact that the charges that have been leveled against them are for peaceful protest. And so the context for this really is that over the past two months, there have been a range of protests around the murder of Elijah McClain by Denver uh, Aurora police, which is just outside of Denver. And the police have been massively embarrassed by this. There have been huge demonstrations, thousands of people, the taking over of, of a city council meeting at one point, and hours of a very poignant testimony being given by the families of many police brutality victims in Denver and the, in the surrounding area. And so this seems to come really as a, it seems as retaliation for those protests and for that exposure of the police. And it was done in such a way, and the charges are such, you know, inciting a riot, kidnapping. I mean, these are completely bogus charges, and we could talk more about it, but it seems entirely 
designed to create the maximum sense of fear, the maximum amount of demonization, and to really try to criminalize the protest movement because these people are really the most identifiable, or at least some of the most identifiable leaders of this protest movement in the area. And to see them charged like this with these kind of charges and this kind of police response uh, it seems to, to us to be really 100% aimed at scaring people from coming out and continuing to protest and continuing to challenge the police. So far, we have not been able to We've only had limited contact with a few people. They're being held, uh, you know, for people to just understand a little bit more. So there's the city of Denver, which people have heard about, and then there's some surrounding counties. And the charges come from one of the, at least one of the surrounding counties. We're still trying to figure it out because they're, you know, not giving all the information out. And so the Denver police arrested people and said, well, we're holding them for another county and then they have to come get them and they have to do something. So they're using a bureaucratic process to try to keep people uh, certainly in jail and not able to get out on bond. And and try to keep them incommunicado uh, from us, their comrades, from their families, and from the broader public.